Well, I've been working with children's books a long time. My friend Karen and I write the Picture Perfect Science series, uh, which integrates picture books into science lessons. And uh, we've been working with picture books, and I've always had a love of picture books. I've used them in my own classroom, teaching elementary science. And um, I just had some ideas of my own and thought that I would give it a go. Well, each of the books features a natural object or natural phenomenon. And the whole idea behind the series is to take something ordinary like a seashell or a pill bug or a sunset and um, show the reader how extraordinary it really is. And my hope is that after people read the book, they will see that object or see that natural phenomenon with new eyes. So the next time they see it, it will, they'll see it in, a, in an extraordinary way, an ordinary object in an extraordinary way. So that's where the series title came from. Oh, I would definitely say the fireflies. Uh, when researching for the book, Next Time You See a Firefly, I, I had an interest in fireflies and I have observed them in my own yard uh, for years and have always loved watching them. Uh, but when I really started to research, I found out so many interesting things about fireflies. Um, I learned that each species of firefly has a different flash pattern. So, um, you know, when you see, and, and when you know that and you see fireflies again, you'll start to notice those different patterns. Um, and you can compare the patterns of the ones that come out earlier in the evening and later in the evening. Um, I learned that um, the male fireflies are the ones that fly around and flash, and the females are the ones that stay perched in the grass or on a bush. Um, so that, that was really eye-opening for me. And I think the most fascinating thing I learned about fireflies is that uh, when they go through their metamorphosis, they're in the larva stage for about two years. And when they become adults, they only live for a couple of weeks. So it's, it's pretty fascinating to me that these, these um, insects, you know, they only get that short time to flash and fly and find a mate. And after researching for that book and writing it, I will never look at a firefly the same way again. Well, I think the next time you see books can be used to connect a lot of curriculum. Of course, there's science in them. Uh, there's, the kids will learn science, scientific facts. Uh, but the other thing is um, you can incorporate them into your language arts um, lessons. And on my website, I have several activities for each book. It's nexttimeyouseecom uh, where teachers can download for free um, activities that, that integrate the Common Core English Language Arts Standards and the Next Generation Science Standards using those books. Um, also, there's some fiction and nonfiction pairing that I have on the website in those activities where there's a fictional book I'll recommend for teachers to read and then read one of my books and then compare author's purpose uh, or that type of thing. So I think it's, they can be used to connect curriculum and to inspire a sense of wonder in students. That is a really tough question. Um, I have lots and lots of favorites. So um, I'll tell you about some of my favorite authors. Uh, I love nonfiction. I love writing nonfiction. And one of the things that I try to communicate to um, students when I do school visits is that nonfiction doesn't mean non-creative. Um, nonfiction authors can be creative about the way they share their information. And if they weren't creative, they would just make a list. So um, it's fun to stick with the facts but be creative in how you present it. And I think some authors that do a really great job of that who really inspire me are April Pulley Sayer, um, Vicki Cobb, Nicola Davies, Seymour Simon, um, and I, I think that you know any of their books, they just, they just come up with creative ways to make um, science interesting, to make the world more interesting and engaging. Well, I'm excited to say the next book in the series is going to be Next Time You See the Moon, and that one is almost finished, and I'm very excited about that. And it's going to be about uh, the moon phases and why the moon phases occur. Um, I have Next Time You See a Cloud is in the works, Next Time You See a Maple Seed, and Next Time You See a Spider Web.
One thing that I like to share with teachers and students is the patterns of my books, of uh, the next time you see books. Um, there's a, a specific pattern each book follows, so when you read all the books, you kind of recognize that pattern. They all start with observing uh, the natural object or the natural phenomenon, and then uh, there's some questions, and then the explanation is offered. And every book ends with the question, isn't that remarkable? Um, so, so teachers and students start to recognize that pattern uh, to all of these books. And one of the other things that I do, because I know I only have about 15 to 20 minutes with the reader, is, is there's one major point in each book. Um, in the seashell book, it's that seashells are made by mollusks. In the firefly book, it's that fireflies flash to find a mate. So everything is built around that one idea. And I think a lot of times, as teachers, we want to teach you know, everything there is to know about fireflies or everything there is to know about the moon. Um, but when I, when I was a teacher and I taught science lab and I'd only have the kids for 40 minutes at a time, I, I learned to really zero in on what is the one thing that I want them to remember when they leave my classroom about the moon or about um, seashells. And uh, that really helped me in writing these books because I thought, what is the one thing I really want them to, um, to remember? Because a lot of times it's, it's uh, not, it's, the hard part is not in figuring out what to include, it's what not to include. And that's something that I work a lot with. I have to um, delete a lot of things when I'm writing because I want to keep it focused on one central idea that I hope the reader can walk away so that the next time they see that object or see that phenomenon, they will see it with new eyes.